to some sufficient degree. Uh, and the number three item uh, is now sort of moving up to the number one slot. So that's something that we need to address uh, in Drupal 8. So taking over the list of things that actually were addressed, um, I think we made pretty significant progress on most of these. Um, maybe some of them were not necessarily progress, but there was at least some like sideways movement of some kind, some effort expended on all of these, uh, except for like a basic views like module, which wasn't even in the top 10 of, of the most recent survey. Um, and a WSUIG editor, which um, we had some really early, early patches into Drupal 7 to sort of get a better API underlaying for uh, WSUIG, but as for an end user experience, there's absolutely no evidence that we did anything whatsoever to improve uh, the WSUIG experience in Drupal 7. So uh, in Drupal 8, uh, we're now calling these sort of initiatives instead of killer features. Um, but order by percentage, once again, here's our new list. Uh, and WYSIWYG um, sort of interestingly has moved down the list quite a bit. Um, media and asset handling is still really high. Uh, HTML5 and CSS3, something that we weren't really thinking about four years ago, uh, wasn't even in the list. So uh, usability, ease of use, mobile support, again, something that's uh, indicative of the changes over the past four years. Uh, better APIs always uh, always in there, and then some new items down here, configuration management, content import export, content staging. So nonetheless, WYSIWYG is still a really important thing that we need to be uh, handling and figuring out a solution to. So uh, I think it's uh, good when I talk about WYSIWYG to kind of outline what I expect from a WYSIWYG. And this is what I think most people expect as the bare minimum of what a WYSIWYG should accomplish. Um, the first thing that it should probably do, uh, a WYSIWYG should provide a, vis a visual representation of output, actual output, while entering content, uh, which is not something we have right now. Even with uh, CK Editor and Tiny MCE uh, and the WYSIWYG projects out there, um, using those, you don't get a visual representation of the output. You get a pretty close approximation of like what bold and italics look like, but not of what your images or your videos or whatever are going to actually look like. Um, the second thing is that uh, this WYSIWYG or Rich Text Editor should have a toolbar to do the basic operations, bold, italicize, add lists. Um, that's not exactly a brain buster either. Um, during the usability study, which unfortunately is happening right now over in the, the main building, they're talking about the usability study. So I recommend watching the video of that um, tomorrow, hopefully. Um, they had users try to put formatting, like a bold tag, into um, an editor. And when a user goes to create a new article, they're like, where's the toolbar? So how do I add a bold tag? Not, well, there was one person, one person that knew HTML in the usability study that tried to bold the text by using a B tag. She was like, B tag, you know, bold, you know, and then hit save and it didn't work. And she's like, huh, well, that's odd. I, 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 th I thought that would work. So she goes back and she edits it again. And then she sees the input formats down below. And you'd think that maybe she would be like, oh, strong tag, right? Nope, full HTML, save. There we go, that worked, right? <laughs> so, so not everybody, like a, a less experienced or powerful user probably wouldn't have even had the option to switch to full HTML. But anyway, users expect a toolbar to assist them. Uh, and when they don't have one, they're just absolutely stumped. Um, it doesn't occur to a lot of people to enter code of any kind um, these days. It's just there should be a toolbar for doing those things. Um, and thirdly, and this is what I'm saying, the basics, you should be able to insert an image with a caption and then float the image and the caption to the left or to the right of the content. Uh, and maybe that's, um, it sounds like it's a specialized use case, but everybody wants that. And it's one of those things that, Drupal up until, well, Drupal even now just absolutely falls on its face when it comes to uh, aligning an image with a caption underneath it all together all at once. You always have to have a div that the div itself is what's getting floated left and right, uh, and the caption is inside of that. So accomplishing that is something that is still, to this day, almost impossible to accomplish in Drupal that just isn't, isn't done. I found a module that does it. Oh, fantastic. 
inline image caption module. Okay, but functionality that I think we can agree upon that that should be. Yeah, so it probably took you three yeah. plus, probably around the edge of like four, five, six modules to get that happening, right? And I, I don't think that should be the case. So uh, we're going to do a short demo here of uh, what I think that we should uh, essentially do. And uh, during my uh, talk at, or my description, I think I noted that um, we're not going to be doing much of a Drupal demo here. What we're going to be doing is looking at WordPress, <laughs> which seems like, oh, blasphemy. But honestly, they've solved this problem, and we haven't. And I think that we could um, imitate a lot from them. And basically, um, the task set before us is so ridiculously simple that all we have to do is get to where they are, which seems like that seems like a, it should be a reasonable goal to imitate. So. Uh, in WordPress here, uh, I'm going to go to the admin section. Maybe. Okay, there we go. Um, and then I'm going to go and create a new post. And I'm sorry for all the uh, people that are familiar with WordPress in the room that uh, um, you're going to have to bear with uh, just this simple functionality here. So I'm going to add a couple lines of text. Uh, insert an image. <laughs> that is that is awesome. Okay, um, so I, I'm having trouble. So fortunately, they have this nice thing where it's like if flash is just being a bummer, then you can um, you can switch to to a non-flash uploader. So pictures, okay, and upload that. Okay, great. So I've got an image here, um, and right off the bat, you can see after uploading an image, I get the convenient options of saying adding a caption. So uh, I can insert, I can create a caption, and then I can right off the bat even say. Uh, which alignment I would like it to be, the size of it, and say insert into post. Uh, and there we go. You can see my picture uh, inserted into the post. And if I at some point change my mind about uh, what the caption is here, currently it says my profile picture, I can change that to be, um, you know, some, something else uh, that has been edited. Uh, and it, you're, you can once again do a wissy wig like operation here. Um, where it's intuitive to basically make changes from one thing to the other. I can I can click on the image and I can write left to right it, line it instead of right, and you can see the the caption goes with it, right? All of this stuff is is really pretty simple. Um, and then actually publish this post, uh, and on output we'll get something um, really really close to what we are seeing in the WYSIWYG. So there we go. So floated to the left, the uh, caption goes with it. Uh, and that's it. And I don't think that that's asking for a whole lot. Um, so let's talk about um, what it is that WordPress has done here uh, and what it is that we can imitate from them. Uh, yes? So you said it should look, uh, it's not really quite WYSIWYG either. They're using essentially or something like that. Yeah, so, so it's not quite WYSIWYG, you're saying, because like the text color changed and it doesn't have the black background? or. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're right. Um, it's so the question is, or the statement was basically, it's not. It's still not quite WYSIWYG. Um, maybe it's just closer than we have, and maybe that's what I'm what I'm after. Um, and that um, the WYSIWYG itself still isn't. It's not like inline editing, and it's not like uh, um, giving you the the actual theme style um, text and coloring and and things like that. It's still quite separated. Yeah. Another question. Um, have you, yeah, so how is this better than Drupal? Um, in Drupal, um, have you ever managed a caption that was underneath the image that you could float left and right at the same time? Like uh, this, this 
caption, the fact that there was a caption right here and I floated it left with the image is actually a bit of an accomplishment. Um, if you try to put a caption under an image uh, with a WYSIWYG, you have to manually, as far as I, if, you, if you're doing this, um, Okay. Yeah, yeah, they, that lets you insert an image, but not a caption. Yeah, th this is all without anything. You've just installed WordPress, and this is what you have. Um, so there's also, um, how is this different from Drupal? Well, I didn't have to do anything to get this functionality. This is what I get uh, by default. And that's what we're trying to, to, to accomplish, is actually including some kind of WYSIWYG actually in core. So that's a big difference in that, Right now, for Drupal, you need to manually download TinyMCE or CK Editor, install uh, WYSIWYG module, and then configure it with your input formats. There's an awful lot of setup there that, that we can skip also. There's another question over here, too. No? OK. So uh, yeah, so let's, let's look a little bit about um, what is going on here. Uh, if I edit this post. Uh, and then actually look at the source code of what's happening here. Um, the, this caption business with uh, it, it floating left and right um, is really a challenging thing to do because if, if you look at what's happening here, I click on the image. So the image currently is selected. Uh, and then when I hit align to the right, it's not the image that was aligned right. It was the wrapper around the image that was actually aligned right. So the, the div around it and the caption below it that was aligned right. Um, so what I clicked on and what was actually aligned were actually different, but that's the expectation that when you, if you right align something like the image, it would right align the caption that goes along with it also. Um, so if we look at how this is actually accomplished uh, in WordPress, it's uh, actually a little bit surprising, I think. Um, where it, that caption itself is not a div at all. It's square brackets, or what Drupal we would call tokens, right? So it says, uh, let, me, let me zoom in a little bit here for everybody. Mm -hmm. Ah, shoot. So, uh, so what we're working with here is that it has an open square bracket caption, ID equals the attachment like ID, uh, the width, the, the alignment, align equals align right, and then the caption actually in it. And then inside of here, we actually have HTML that represents the link to the image and the image itself. And when you left and right align things, what it's actually doing is it's just updating this meta code here, this caption or uh, token, if you will, to actually do the alignment left and right. So what WordPress essentially has here that, that we do not is they have filtering done on input uh, versus just on output. So in WordPress, when you insert uh, a video or uh, an image or really anything um, other than text, it uses these meta tags or uh, um, tokens to sort of handle anything that's complex. And if it's something like a YouTube video, you don't actually get the YouTube video in line. You get like a little placeholder thing that you know has like an, a YouTube icon there. Um, so once again, not quite WYSIWYG, but still better than Drupal, which is if you have a, um, a token of some kind that's doing like the inline module, does the same sort of thing where it has square brackets. Um, when you're using the WYSIWYG with inline module, what you get in the WYSIWYG is actually just the square brackets, literally, like no replacement whatsoever. And so uh, what we have here is we have essentially uh, some input uh, some input filtering in addition to the output filtering. So everything essentially um, has been written twice, if you, if you think about it. Like all filters have uh, mm -hmm. something that is done both on input and output. Do we have any other questions so far? Yeah. I think the whole um, inline editing thing is just, I work a lot with, um, I work at the university and we do a student newspaper. And mm -hmm. all, we, all we do, I give them training on using InDesign, which is perfect because the editors see exactly what they're doing. They see everything on the page. And mm -hmm. I think this is the whole going to another screen and seeing everything sort of in the admin in the interface is something that we just have to almost throw out and have this idea of doing everything in the pages. I think that's... that's <laughs> I, I mean, we're going about it completely the wrong way. We, we should be giving them exactly what they what they want on the screen. YouTube video shouldn't be a 
hey, picture saying this is a YouTube video. It should be the actual video. Web fonts, if we, there was a great talk on web fonts yesterday, they should be rendered directly in the page. We should see the exact thing that we're, we're getting, not just um, it in the other room. So, so the general uh, diatribe was basically that um, Drupal and even having a separate editing interface, um, so even imitating WordPress at all is totally the wrong approach, that it should all be inline editing, um, just literally like looking at the front end of your site, clicking edit, and then it becomes editable. It should be more like imitating Firebug than yeah. Imitating Firebug, okay. So um, I can't disagree that that would be amazing, but the technical challenges around it are insurmountable, literally, um, to do it in a generic fashion. <laughs> Every, everyone's like, whoa, 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 what about editables, and what about HTML5, and what about all this new technology stuff that we have? And it's like, well, can you put that into a system like Drupal and have it actually be distributable? I mean, is that a, a generic enough solution that it's going to work for everybody that uses Drupal? I mean, yeah, just doing something that uses anything like that advanced, like a, an editable, um, is not something that's feasible in the internet right now. Um, as, as a, a solution that we got actually be distributable. So let's, okay, let's go through them. Uh, over here. Um, Matrix, my source Matrix have got a, uh, an inline editing thing and they're PHP MySQL based. Which, which product? Um, my source Matrix. My source Matrix. Is that a product or is it like, is it a service as a software or? Open source content management system. An open source content management system and it's called? My source Matrix. My source Matrix. Matrix. Okay, just as a suggestion. I haven't looked at it, so I can't com comment on it, really. And let's go to the back. Um, not Larry. <laughs> we'll get you next. Uh, yeah, quite heartened to see that you're actually comparing to another CMS. One of the things I've always thought was, you know, there's some things that are Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So every editor I know wants to link to another page on the website, but actually there's no nice way of doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to copy the URL from somewhere, or no. there's three modules that you have to kind of configure and work out and plug into your particular editor of choice. And, um, so it's quite nice to see someone actually like, what, what are the other CMSs doing? Yeah. And actually, um, why would you, you have this in there? So I'll reiterate for the, the recording. Um, there was a, basically a comment about saying, yes, it's great that we're comparing to WordPress. Um, and actually, the follow-up of that, I think, is that, um, as far as I know, WordPress doesn't have a fantastic way for linking between pages. Um, but I could be totally wrong about that, because I haven't actually looked too much into it. Um, so you hit link, and you get URL. Oh, no, or link to existing content. Here we go. Um, and so we have a search here that lets us link to an existing piece of content. That's pretty awesome. So um, <laughs> I'm just saying, well, I mean, Drupal is so far behind because for WordPress, this is where editors live. They live in this editor, in the WYSIWYG. Uh, and for Drupal, we just haven't really, we, what we do is we make more and more fields, right? We make a different field for everything, and that solves our problems. Um, so uh, let's go Larry first and then up here. OK, go ahead. Uh, continuation on this. OK, tiny MCE node picker, something to do the same thing uh, in Drupal with tiny MCE module, or, t or with WYSIWYG module, probably. Yes. Yeah, WYSIWYG module plus tiny MCE. So that module I was trying to find is called image caption. Image caption. Image, image project image underscore and does, that, the, does the image caption project work with WYSIWYGs of any kind? Yes. So yes, it does work with, does it work specifically with Tiny MCE or CK Editor or? Um, I don't think it matters. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It actually takes the title attribute of the image. Ah, okay, it takes the title attribute and uses it as the caption. So basically, uh, it, it's, yeah, yeah, um, clever. So uh, uh, Larry in, in the back. So Mm-hmm. Again, you know, if you're doing that, you're making direct editing 
The raw source again. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because there's, yeah, so Larry's basically saying that using inline editing or using a WYSIWYG like this and inserting an image directly into a post often is not the desirable situation, which I could not agree more with. Say, like, if you're writing uh, an article for some major newspaper, which there are plenty of newspapers, major newspapers using Drupal, um, you might not ever be allowed to use an inline image. You need to put that into a separate field or something like that. And the, the image itself uh, and the caption and all that stuff is then aggregated into some kind of slideshow or something like that and then laid out by the editors actually on the output. And I totally agree. Um, WordPress's uh, general approach here, I'm basically saying this, these are great features that, um, that we can implement, but I'm definitely not saying that we need to lock people into the WordPress model of thinking. Definitely not at all. Like if you want to disable the image button entirely and set up your filter uh, in Drupal lingo to not allow the image tag, all of that, definitely we're, we're not throwing away flexibility here. We're adding functionality that um, just gets people the basic functionality that they want. Over here. Yeah, so, so is there a question to be answered there? Was that a general statement? Okay, gotcha. So basically, um, there, there's a, a common situation where you need to attach additional metadata to an individual image or video or whatever it is. And the solution for that now in Drupal is you make that image a node or you make that video a node. Um, and then you attach all the assets and like the like copyright and maybe the, the date it was taken and um, the license on it and all that stuff. You might include all that stuff on the asset itself and then use node reference. Um, sorry, the names of these modules are just giant strings of abstract nouns. Uh, node reference URL picker, what was it called? <laughs> Node picker. Okay, well, that's quite more simple than I was making it. So, node picker module to actually insert that into uh, a WYSIWYG, and it's like a node reference in the WYSIWYG that actually displays the image. Um, and how how would we solve that in Drupal? Well, in Drupal seven, um, we have the ability we have entities. So, essentially, you can add fields to anything now um, out of the box. That's users, terms comments and nodes. Uh, so you can add fields to all of those as if there were nodes in Drupal 6. So essentially all the flexibility CCK on any arbitrary object. And so in Drupal 7, um, there's a lot of work around the media module um, that is finally broken out the media entity. They've called it now the file entity, which is a really positive development in, in that project. Um, because what essentially it makes it is that every single asset itself doesn't need to be a node anymore. It can just be a file, and you can attach as many fields as you want to it. Uh, and then all of the information is not associated with the node. It's actually associated with the file directly. So the file has an ID, and all of that metadata is associated directly with the file. Um, and uh, WordPress actually does do that same sort of thing, where uh, all of this metadata that I've entered down here, um, well, Actually, this, this isn't true. This is now the instance. But when I was looking at it in the media picker, so if I say, you know, from the gallery, oh boy. Okay, here we go. So when I'm actually looking at thing here, this is actually metadata that is actually on this file directly. And every time I use this, it will actually it'll save the same information. So the caption, the description, and, and things like that. So this is actually metadata actually potentially on the file itself. Um, so I think that in, the, in moving forward using a file entity like 
um, media module is sort of pioneering right now, a file entity in Drupal 8, I think, is a necessity. Um, and if we make that happen, then we'll be able to do all kinds of great um, sort of uh, attachments and metadata onto images themselves. Um, Deciphered is in the room, and I'm going to raise your hand. Um, basically, um, Deciphered's um, big thing is um, trying to figure out what this dialogue looks like when you click image, how to handle a file that needs to be done there. And I know the, the media project also has been working a lot on that, um, but this is another, like, that approach is something else that we're basically going to try to figure out this system after we get sort of the initial, just get a WYSIWYG and core. So for right now, the, the target is the first two, a visual representation, get an input, an input filtering system in addition to the output fil filtering system, uh, get the toolbar set up, and then we're going to figure out um, sort of what the image browser looks like. And my, my plan doesn't yet extend that far, but fortunately, the media project and Stuart with uh, uh, WYSIWYG Fields is working on that project sort of uh, in parallel. So I, I'm sure that both of those projects work will eventually find their way into whatever solution we end up doing for Drupal 8. And they're compatible, so you can actually use WYSIWYG fields with the media module in tandem, which is awesome. There was another question up here, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think that the input should be in the same uh, structure as the site, really? The should, it, should it be HTML, or should it be something like Markdown? Okay, yeah. Do you think that the input should be in the same structure as the output? Um, so basically, something like Markdown, um, should we be using Markdown instead? And my general feeling is that um, I think HTML should be the primary storage mechanism just because it's the closest to the output system and it's what works best and most natively with WYSIWYG editors today. And so using HTML saves you a whole heck of a lot of trouble because browsers render it directly and WYSIWYGs have been built essentially to produce HTML. And every time you deviate from that and do something else like Markdown or BB code, um, you're making work for yourself to actually implement that translation in JavaScript from BB code or Markdown to the HTML content that is rendered by the browser. So uh, I feel like HTML is the safest format, but with WYSIWYGs, there's a limitation to um, how far you can take that. Uh, and I think that basically augmented HTML, so stuff like this uh, inline token handling, I think um, that if we're going to get this functionality, we need to be able to embrace that we can't just use straight HTML anymore. It needs to be something a little bit more powerful. Yeah. With the same idea that uh, okay, we're going to basically write these fields down as HTML fields, which is all fine for when you're putting it out to a browser, but when you're putting it out to other devices or which may be like mobile phones, iPads, whatever, through applications or via services, how do you expect those things to handle the HTML? Or Gotcha. So when it comes to a WYSIWYG, editors um, and bloggers specifically, which is why WordPress has um, got such a heavy WYSIWYG-like interface because it's made for blogging, um, how do you handle situations where you're feeding this information out to multiple devices if, if you're using a WYSIWYG? Um, and there are probably two approaches to that. One is that you implement um, heavier filtering on the output that you uh, um, basically do parsing in regular expressions on the output to find things like images and then present them in different manners to different devices uh, or as John Albin would recommend like scaling down and delivering different versions of the same image uh, based on the uh, browser size not actually device targeting at all but just by window size um, uh, or the other alternative is that the amount of WYSIWYG capability that you have is restricted essentially to bulleted lists it, like uh, uh, strong tags and italics, maybe alignment. And that's all of the functionality you get in the WYSIWYG and then everything else is separate fields so you can pull that information out and deliver it in different manners. So there definitely is not, um, you know, the, this WYSIWYG approach is like really difficult when you're dealing with multiple devices because now it's definitely not WYSIWYG like exactly on output because you're going to have to see it in six different formats which are all different 
of course you can't have the editing interface be exactly what that system is, unless you have six different WYSIWYGs, one for each different format, but I don't think anybody's going to want that approach. A theme switcher, yeah, oh. Yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> um, another question. Hey, Jace. I'm glad you asked, <laughs> because <laughs> the, basically the question is, do we have any concrete plans? Do we have? I missed the beginning of our presentation, so I it, It's okay, because I haven't actually gotten a concrete plan so far. Basically, all that we've been talking about is um, what is it that we're going for? We're looking for um, a, a visual representation of the output during input. We're looking for a toolbar to insert. Uh, and align text, uh, as well as ins uh, inserting an image of some kind, and then aligning that image left or right with a caption. That's what we're talking about. Um, but we've uh, found some other things that um, that we can imitate just in this short short time. So let's look at Drupal. Now that we've we've looked at sort of um, uh, an approach that would be worth imitating, um, let's look at Drupal's approach right now in Drupal 7, uh, and then talk about ways we can improve that in Drupal 8. So this is Drupal 7. Uh, I've already downloaded and then installed the WYSIWYG module as well as CK Editor. Um, I could have used TinyMCE, obviously. And as you guys probably know, right now there are text formats uh, and there are WYSIWYG profiles. Uh, and so WYSIWYG profiles is where you set up the editor and text format is where you set up the filtering. So let's say I wanted to add an image button to my editor. Um, I would go over here to WYSIWYG. And let's say I wanted to add this to the filtered HTML uh, type. I would save. And then I would hit edit on this type. And of course, uh, WYSIWYG module does define a default set of buttons, but unfortunately, they're not checked for you. This is just kind of like a little UI fail that it should probably check the ones that are active by default, right? That would be nice. Um, but instead, if you check even one button, then it undoes all the other uh, buttons. So if I enable a couple, and I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say, you know, let's see, where, is, where even is image? Here we go, image. Uh, and then I hit save. Um, what I've done is I made a new, uh, a new editor that when I create a piece of filtered HTML content, right, I can insert an image. Uh, but I'm going to save you guys the, the work of this. If I uh, insert an image here, what's going to happen uh, on output? Yeah, exactly. Um, so the statement was, uh, with filtered HTML, by default, image the image tag is not included in the list of allowed HTML tags. So I'm going to see the image in the WYSIWYG, but when I hit save, there's not going to be an image there. Now that's pretty baffling to a lot of new Drupal administrators. Um, and so what you have to do after setting up your WYSIWYG, you need to go back over to your, uh, to your list of input form or your text formats. And then you need to edit filtered HTML. And then you need to go down here and add image to the list of allowed tags for that image to actually come out. And this is why I'm saying that Drupal currently is doing things. Um, well, actually, it's not, not WYSIWYG module's fault. WYSIWYG module is doing a, a bang up job of what it's attempting to do. It's just that in order for this to make sense, we need tighter integration between the WYSIWYG and the input and the filtering system on output. So much that they need to essentially be the same thing. Um, so right now, I think on this filters page or text formats page, which is provided by the filters module. The whole situation is just messy, right? The filters module provides text formats, and then text formats are associated with WYSIWYG editors. Um, the whole thing is just crazy. It would be nice if, uh, on this page, I would just immediately choose whether or not I wanted a WYSIWYG editor or not. Like, for the, for the filtered HTML editor, I'm going to turn on TinyMCE, maybe as a dropdown, none, TinyMCE, CK editor, whatever. Um, roles, that's great. 
And then I would be able to choose my toolbar, hopefully through a much better interface than we have currently, like you'd be able to drag in the buttons. And if you drag in the bold button, it enables the strong tag automatically for you. Uh, and then maybe down below, you have a list of additional tags that are allowed even if they're not buttons, right? There should be a lot of configuration here that is done automatically. If you enable the image button, you should enable the image tag on the output. There's just a lot of like no-brainer things that we could potentially do here if they were the same thing. Uh, however, calling a text format as the place where you configure your WYSIWYG editor, I think is also super confusing. And so my uh, proposal essentially of what it is that we should do, I think we should rename text formats to call, and call them editors. So you can go and you can configure your editors. And let me show you just sort of where this has gone a little bit. So this is a modified Drupal of Drupal 7 in which I have renamed text formats to editors. So um, you would go under editors and unfortunately you're going to see there's not a whole lot of action here. But an editor essentially is the exact same thing as a text format now with no changes whatsoever. But the lingo here suddenly kind of makes a lot more sense. So it's like add a new editor, right? And it's just like, oh, I want to configure the editor, the, the filtered HTML editor, or the full HTML editor, or if you had BB code, the BB code editor, or the, I mean, things, it's like, wow, this makes sense. You know, the name editor makes sense from an end user perspective. Uh, and the fact that we, we've been basically forcing te terminology like filters and text formats upon our end users, no, neither of which they're actually very concerned with. They're concerned with like a toolbar and the editor, like they're concerned about how do I get the content in, not exactly like what kind of filtering occurs on the output, right? And so my recommendation here, and this one is almost going uh, bogus, I do think that we should update the lingo to be, um, to be end user facing lingo as opposed to developer logo. I think that would be great, or uh, logo, lingo. Uh, so make the lingo uh, front-end friendly uh, and make it back-end sort of, you know, adjust to, to our users. So calling them editors, um, which to me, uh, the filter module providing editors is silly naming conflicts. And so my recommendation is that I think that we should rename the filter module to the editor module. And so whenever you... Uh, want to have a WYSIWYG somewhere uh, in form API talk, that would mean you would say pound type equals editor. That sounds pretty cool, right? <laughs> and you'd say pound uh, editor equals fil filtered HTML. I mean, these sort of things, like when, when you put it all together, you find out that the pieces fit really nicely, that maybe that's something we should do. Of course, renaming a module in Drupal core is a significant effort. <laughs> so, and the really frustrating thing is that the first thing that needs to be done if we do this is we need to rename the module from filter to editor and then make iterative improvements on top of that because you can't just remove a module and add a new module into Drupal core and have that be passed through the patch process or passed through the gates now. Um, that would just be a tremendous, like, you know, 1200 comment thread with a two megabyte patch. It just isn't a process that, that anybody can review adequately. So it has to be this iterative improvement and getting through the first problem of like renaming filter to editor, which I think that's where we need to start, is gonna prove to be a, a huge battle. But that's why I'm here to you guys to explain all my thinking, so hopefully you guys can, can agree with me. Uh, Larry. Oh, do I have any usability studies to say that editors is better than text formats or filters or other terms? No, definitely not. So do the usability study first before we start implementing this. And that brings up an interesting point. Um, obviously, doing the usability study first means that it needs to be finished. Um, or at least usable. I mean, right now it wouldn't make any sense if we had somebody go through a usability study with this and we said, okay, I want you to add a, um, add a bold tag. You know, and, well, first of all, they'd be like, well, what's a, what's a bold tag? And you'd be like, well, it's HTML. And they're like, well, what's HTML? And now your usability study is pretty well shot, isn't it? Because it's like, how are you, how are you gonna have them? You have to teach them what HTML is, but the end purpose of this is so they don't have to learn HTML at all. So 
So, so um, you could do a usability study with paper as an alternative. I'm, um, okay. yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, so, so as an abbreviated test, I, yeah, I, I can agree with that too. Um, if you were sent, telling users that they had a choice of WYSIWYG systems or had the ability to turn on and off uh, the WYSIWYG, uh, which term, basically this label right here next to this dropdown, made the most sense? Uh, and if it was plain text, versus like full HTML or plain text versus visual or something like that. Um, you know, which term did they find to be most intuitive and which one did they find first? I mean, that, that would, like an abbreviated test, that would be great. The problem is though, it's not just the editor because it really, it's not just the buttons you're getting in the editor that, that this is affecting. It is the, it is the filtering that's affecting mm -hmm. Right. So maybe it should be called format and not filtering or editing. But I think we need to try to think of some more terms and see, not, not necessarily the names of the formats, but what that word that says editor to the left should be. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, for the admin, what the most um, intuitive name, before we go changing the name of the module. That's what yeah, so basically uh, the end statement is that we need to figure out, we need more evidence to back up that changing the name is a worthwhile endeavor. Right, and the word the word editor doesn't exactly convey the amount of filtering and the amount of security that may be implied there. Um, but really, I mean, right now we have a really really hard time with text formats, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So making it clear that the security and what the full repercussions of what these things do, we need to make that clear no matter what we go with. Uh, back here. Right, which actually that process you've described has never been done in Drupal, ever. And it's kind of like, uh, it, I mean, you can say maybe, you know, we've had usability studies, we're always testing what we have right now. Um, they've tried some things like usability study, testing on vertical tabs uh, and things that were obvious improvements and we found that, yay, those things are better. Um, but we kind of already knew that what the results of those things were going to be because everybody liked it. Um, and everybody liked it is pretty much the model that we've been going on forever. <laughs> So basically, um, the description was, or the full comment was that we need to have like UX people come in and come up with potential designs, and then we need to have that reviewed, uh, and then we need to have some way to actually test that and see if it's worth building, and then we'll, we actually build it all out and see, and then we test it again probably to make sure the end result is good, and then we maybe reiterate and change it on top of that. Um, there's kind of an issue with the, the Drupal community that we actually have so much more development power than anything else that oftentimes what we'll do is we'll develop it first and then usability testing it and test it because honestly it was easier for us just to write the whole thing and then have it tested against the final product and then iterate on top of that than it is to have the usability tests. But then of course some people's work sometimes gets said that is entirely wrong and the entire thing gets thrown out. Um, which has happen, happened in the past before too. But, or, or it'll go into core and then the next version of Drupal core will fix it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, what you've described sounds desirable, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of resources there that you've described that uh, aren't immediately available. Um, there's another comment up. Oh, yes. Source and commercial. 
Yeah, so that's a great comment. So regarding like usability and functionality that we can we can potentially implement in a Drupal, can't we just look at what other people have done and learn from that? Um, which is a really good statement because um, WordPress's entire UI, the 3.0 version, I think it was, I could be totally wrong about that, maybe it's 2.5, they had HappyCog do their entire administrative UI, like everything, and they redid the entire design, kind of similar to what uh, Drupal did with Mark Bolton, uh, only since Happy or since uh, um, WordPress is essentially a, a single company developing it for the most part, um, they implemented it entirely versus what we got in Drupal was kind of like a, a half-baked version because the Drupal community actually wasn't interested in implementing all of the designs that were in the, the D7 UX movement. So we ended up with this funny kind of half-done system. Things like the, the dashboard, which is just complete catastrophes, and things like the toolbar that, you know, a lot of people liked admin menu better, which the irony being that WordPress essentially actually has an admin menu and we have a toolbar. It's kind of just the way things work out. Sometimes it's just funny. So, um, yeah, any, any other comments about um, WYSIWYG and this approach? Like, generally speaking, like, how's it, how's it feel in, in the back? Okay, so basically, how do we move forward, and especially non-developers, how do, how, do, how do we participate with this? Um, well, right now, um, with Drupal 8 development, things are um, a little bit of a standstill, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be that, that situation forever. Um, at DrupalCon Chicago, um, I was rustling up a, a small team of developers to try to get sort of behind this idea of making input filtering and output filtering the same thing and building the WYSIWYG in. Uh, into all one one big interface, and generally got a lot of positive reception there. Um, but as for as for now, like uh, I, I guess uh, we could have things like uh, um, I mean the UX designers and the UI designers, uh, people that have the ability to actually come up with things without actually having something to start with already, um, could have a big impact here in in terms of like visualizing what the final interface would look like. Um, as for where that collaboration can actually happen, um, I'm hoping to take a lead on this particular project and actually make move it forward into, into Drupal 8 core. Um, and for now, what I've done is, uh, let's see if I can figure out where this is. Oh, I know where I can do. So, uh, what I've done is I've created a sandbox project uh, for WYSIWYG and core, and that's where this code that uh, I showed you of basically the renamed editor module um, lives. And I think actually, this is what, it, you know, I still haven't quite figured out uh, um, how to navigate Drupal.org without the URL, but uh, um, <laughs> no idea, no idea at all. Um, so there, there's a, there should be a usability, like a core initiatives, like things that the community, community initiatives, um, and in that one there is a WYSIWYG section and included in that is um, my post that says I'm trying to take a lead on this. Um, and it links here to my sandbox. Uh, and the sandbox project is, um, currently only has uh, two issues in it, which basically is a call for volunteers, uh, which if you're interested you should post there um, because that's where I get a list of people that are interested in the project. So if you can add uh, uh, subscribe to the call for volunteers, uh, and uh, this is like just a general meta discussion currently, 
uh, which honestly, the number of meta discussions that we can have about WYSIWYG without actually doing something is pretty infinite. So what I'm wanting to do is actually have a discussion around code that exists as opposed to discussions around just WYSIWYG and core because we've been having discussions for years, but no, we haven't actually written any code. So um, there was another, yeah, up here. Okay, so um, basically, yeah, it would be great uh, if we can get more people, especially like uh, the comment specifically was around accessibility in WYSIWYGs and WYSIWYGs naturally, you, your accessibility of your site oftentimes is dependent upon your editors to know about accessibility and a WYSIWYG sort of immediately reduces the ex overall accessibility of your site unless you enforce some kind of tools to make them uh, work in an accessible manner. And so how can you participate? How can you help in, be involved in that? Um, and there's so many people that really want to improve upon the system, but you know, it's like what it is, uh, when it comes to the amount of discussions that are necessary and the amount of things, like reading text is a tedious process, and that's why I think that we need things that are more tangible, like we need, uh, we need images or mock-ups, we need wireframes, things that people can actually look at and, and sort of respond to. Um, and my natural uh, instinct almost always is to have working wireframes, so basically just code it and see if it works. Um, and that's the way a lot of Drupal development has always been because that's what we have a lot of. We have the ability to work really quickly in the development side, but then where things actually get held up in Drupal, people think that, some people may think, I should say, some people may think that Drupal development is slow because it takes a long time to write the code. That's totally not the case. Drupal development is slow because it takes a lot of work to get through uh, the politicking and the bureaucracy and basically reaching some kind of agreement. Uh, core development, like Views, got an entirely like new UI that was designed and basically executed upon in a matter of months. Um, and Views was basically, the entire interface was overhauled over the course of six months, which is a, an amazing feat. And that's because we have incredible development muscle to actually execute on things if you remove the processes. Of course, with Drupal Core, something that's this mature, it needs processes to make sure that stuff doesn't go willy-nilly all the time. So um, actually developing this and getting something working, and with the Git migration, we have this amazing ability to do sandboxes. We can actually do stuff and have something to work against. Uh, and if, if they enable tarballs on sandbox projects, we'll have an even greater ability to make this stuff accessible to people and say, look, this is it. Set up a demo site and look, look, go try it out. And it's just a website and that's your mock-up, if you will. And I, th I think, I don't know, that my feeling is that's the way I, I feel that this, is, this project is going to proceed. Um, where essentially, uh, um, I hate to make this so, so single person focused, but honestly, I like to code and I like to do things that move things forward. So what I think is probably going to happen is we'll have some code um, that is actually executable and you can actually go look at. And then we start the discussion of was this actually right? And we roll back and like start from the beginning again, which is the way that <laughs> pretty much everything has happened in, in, in the past, well, except for D7's UX, which was sort of the anomaly. And honestly, not everybody was actually happy with the way that turned out. So, um, yeah, an another one. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes, yep, yeah, yep. I'm so glad you asked. So basically, uh, the question was, uh, if we're going to put a, a WYSIWYG editor in core, 
um, and have things like you're going to drag in buttons into your toolbar and choose how your toolbar works. Um, ultimately, we need to make a decision about which one to include. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm not going to keep you waiting. I'm not here to tell you what that editor is. Um, I, am, I can tell you that we essentially have a choice to make. We need to choose one. Um, and that I think that right now there are two real contenders, CK Editor and Tiny MCE. And choosing between one of those is a decision that we need to make. Um, uh, the simple uh, solution right now, WordPress uses Tiny MCE. If we take that approach, we have a tremendous advantage that we can just copy a bunch of their code, like literally just rip it right out. It's GPL. It's great. That's what we are. So we can just totally move it right on over. Um, so that would save us some, some potential work. Um, CK Editor, um, I think this is purely by my gut feeling. I think CK Editor is more popular right now. WordPress has been using Tiny MCE for the last six years, and so they'll probably continue to use Tiny MCE because it's what they started with, and that's why they're using it. Um, so I think we could save ourselves a lot of work with Tiny MCE, and we know it does what we want it to do. CK Editor, I'm quite confident that it can do the same thing too, but if we run into, uh, like, I think we should try it out first so we can research the alternatives and see if it, if it works, then maybe we'll proceed that way. And if it doesn't work, then we, at least we can say, well, we tried, but we have to go the other way. So um, I want to talk a little bit more about why, about this single choice, because the WYSIWYG module currently, as it is today, the WYSIWYG module um, has attempted to write a generic wrapper API around all other WYSIWYGs, making it possible for you to swap out any WYSIWYG you want uh, in, in, into Drupal, but just by dragging in the library. Um, this is the one point where um, Sun, Daniel Goodwin, who unfortunately is not here, uh, he and I disagree about that particular point, and that I, I see that we've been working on this WYSIWYG API for years, uh, and the simplest thing that we've implemented in this generic plugin fashion is the teaser break, right? The teaser break little icon to split the body and the the teaser and the, the actual body has been written as a generic plugin, but unbelievably, that simplest piece of functionality does not work across more WYSIWYGs than TinyMCE and CK Editor. It hardly even works in CK Editor, as far as I, I know. And so, essentially, we've written this generic API, which is a huge burden that people that have written CK Editor plugins or TinyMCE plugins can't actually use their knowledge. They need to write a whole new plugin that is a Drupal plugin that doesn't actually, that is a completely different set of knowledge that can't be used anywhere else. Um, and so my general feeling is that the generic API, um, I think is extremely difficult and it's a lot of work and, it, and we haven't even succeeded in it despite the years that we've been working on it, that the generic API is not worth pursuing. That we should pick one and honestly, whichever one we pick, people will develop against that one platform and if you install an alternative one, like other modules that integrate it with the WYSIWYG, maybe media module continues to exist in Drupal 8, we'll need to implement the functionality themselves, basically say once for TinyMCE and once for CK Editor. Because I think that one editor, it just has so many, it's simpler, uh, existing knowledge can be reused, um, the functionality is already built, at least in the case of WordPress. There are so many advantages to reducing the, the code weight there and just building against one. So. Back here, you've been waiting a long time. Yeah, so how do I feel about content editable um, and using basically new browser, newer browser technology? I know Firefox has had it for years now. Internet Explorer 5.5 had it, but I really doubt that was against any standard or anything. Yeah, so the, the ability to do that sort of stuff has been around for a while, but um, how do I feel about it? I still feel that it's not mature enough. It's not a mature enough technology to actually become reliant upon it, um, which I know it's kind of a bummer that we're stuck against this uh, technology that is um, really like new and not mature enough, and this technology that is very mature but old and crufty, because like TinyMCE and CK Editor, they're not exactly like you know hot new projects. That peop most people have worked with them at one time or another, and a lot of them people aren't happy with it. But um, I've, I still feel like um, right now we just the, the ability to use like in-browser editing and content editable just we're just not there yet. So in the future potentially, but 
those those tools also are also like um, they're very much HTML tied, doing this kind of like filtering stuff on input and on output and making it so that the browser itself is executing some kind of code replacement. Um, just seems like we're, yeah, I don't, I don't, it's, it's, it's too new for me to even have, have pursued it much. We are always thinking in terms of development, technologies, modules, but actually for the end user, it just has to work. Yeah, and yeah, so. Yeah, so from the end user perspective, uh, the statement is like we, we, we can be attracted by like uh, new approaches and new uh, technologies and potentially they'd be really cool and they'd work really well. But for the end user, we really need something that works. And we need something that works widely with a system like Drupal. Um, Camilla. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is that yeah, so um two points, so the first one was uh, uh, the big gripe against WYSIWYG is the type of data that gets saved in the database can look really ugly, right, like maybe it has empty p tags all over the place and and stuff like that um, and the second point was um does WordPress do any kind of like link checking to make sure the images exist or that the links are valid and, and things like that? And to answer the second point right off, I don't think so. I think it's just if you've linked to a broken image, then you've linked to a broken image. Uh, and if that image has been removed, then it's removed and now you have a broken image. So I don't think it has any special um, checking against that kind of thing. Um, uh, WordPress does, however, do some work to kind of ensure that you've got nice content that gets saved into your database. Um, an interesting thing that WordPress does uh, is you'll see here, like I've got these two paragraphs here and I entered these in the WYSIWYG, uh, but they're not actually wrapped in P tags. Um, so even though this is the HTML, so like the WYSIWYG here that we've got, uh, if I enter in new lines uh, and then I look at the HTML, you'll see that they don't have P tags around them. And that's because WordPress essentially implements, this is what we're lacking, uh, WordPress implements the automatic uh, return to P tag filter like Drupal does, uh, but it implements that on the input as well as on the output, which is what we're lacking, right? With Drupal, you should do the same thing, that when you do an, a return in the uh, WYSIWYG, it doesn't put a, a P tag in the HTML because the P tag is added by the filtering. Right? And it's the same sort of thing that this is what I'm talking about where the filter is applied on the input as well as on the output. And if we had that, then the code that was inserted into the WYSIWYG would be a lot more similar to the code or uh, the code that people type out by hand right now. Because when people type out by hand right now, they know that the P tags get added for them, so they don't add it. And if we had that integration between the input uh, and the WYSIWYG, then the WYSIWYG would know that the P tag was going to be added automatically and it wouldn't do it either. It's a lot easier in WordPress though because they don't have 500 different possible input formats and they're not flexible. I mean, there's, a, there's one function called WP Auto Community. I used to call that in my. <coughs> Yep, uh, actually that's exactly what I, what I was in the midst of pulling up, was that there is a, a function here that essentially does that. And WordPress does not have that ability to, yeah, configure to configure your input formats, right? It's all just the same for everybody. So I think it's a lot simpler there. And, and you know, with, with Drupal, I don't think you want to lose the ability to have different filtering and security things that you have. Um, WordPress has it pretty much hardwired. Yep, yep, and here it is. Uh, underscore word, WordPress underscore no P for paragraph tag and this is its regex that it runs essentially when you turn on and off the editor uh, or when you save it into the database uh, when the editor the editor automatically turns itself off when you hit the save button and that's what gets saved into the database There's also a function called the WP auto P or something like that. Yep. And then there's a PHP function that does the exact same thing. Exactly. So what I've been saying, we need to essentially write filters twice. You need to write them once in JavaScript and once in PHP. And they don't need to be identical, but they need to be pretty close. 
in order to to make that uh, make that work. So, uh, a recap on. Okay, yeah, I have about two minutes. Thanks for thanks for that, Zep. So, a recap um, of what it is that we need to do. Um, we need to enhance the filtering system to provide a combined input. Uh, which is basically means JavaScript and output, which means PHP filtering. So make filtering do input and output filtering instead of just output filtering. Um, unified configuration of rich text editors or WYSIWYGs with the uh, configuration of filters. So filters and WYSIWYGs, they're all one thing now instead of having them be in two separate administrative areas that don't, don't talk to each other. Um, and shift the terminology around content creation from developer-centric terminology like filtering to user-centric terminology like editors. Um, and yeah, as, as we discussed, editors isn't set in stone. I just think that it's a good proposal. Um, but this is the extent so far of uh, where I think WYSIWYG is going to head. There are a couple things that are, are totally unanswered, and I think that we need to have more information on them before we can actually um, uh, well, I'm not saying we can't act upon it. We can act upon a very little information, actually. It's just not sure that you're going to go the right way. Um, but like, which editor we're going to use is a big decision, and the ultimate bike shed. I'm sure it's going to be a, a fantastic battle for the Drupal annals of history uh, of over which one we're going to use there. But I'd like to base that not upon the things that we have today, because what people are judging today is they're judging the out-of-box experience, because Drupal's integration with those things is really bad. It's literally like everybody is judging them off of what they get out of the box, not the kind of integration that they could potentially have. I think that if we write a WYSIWYG into core and we give it just kick-ass integration with Drupal, it doesn't matter which one we choose because it's going to surpass everything we've ever done before as long as you write really good integration. Right now, with like the WYSIWYG module, the idea was to provide you with as many out-of-box experiences as possible, um, and none of which are good. Right? It would be great if we had like a um, whichever one we choose. If we make a really compelling, tightly integrated experience, then I think that that it'll make it so people don't don't really even care what the editor is. Um, back here. Does WordPress have the ability to offer anything else? I think they do. I've seen, plugins. yes, plugins that allow you to swap out the editor. Um, but of course, what those editors need to do is they need to re-implement almost everything that is done by WordPress core for their particular editor. Um, so there's a lot more work upon each individual uh, plugin's opportunity. I think that will remain. Um, I'm not suggesting that the filter module or editor module would include TinyMC or CK editor directly. I think that that still needs to be a separate module that is just the default implementation that is turned on in the standard profile. So TinyMCE module or CK editor module, um, one of those will rise from the ashes and be included in core essentially along with the editor module um, and they'll just collaborate together and they'll just be the default. Right? And being the default pretty much means that they're what everybody will use. Any other last comments? Um, so, can we show a video like right now? Um, do we have time for that? Okay. Okay. Well, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, thank you very much for for coming. Okay, so in the meantime, while we're waiting for lunch, let's watch the video on WYSIWYG fields.